Hey guys, it's Britt. Today I am here from the car. I am parked, I am safe, but I am gonna share with you guys a bunch of products that I either don't buy anymore or if I have to buy them, I will go the cheapest route possible. So if you are interested, please keep watching. Hi guys, how are you? <laughs> okay, so a couple things. I'm sorry if the lighting is not that great. I'm literally on my lunch break at work and I found like a shady, shady spot so that my uh, camera won't get too hot because if it sits in the direct sun, it'll like kind of fuck up the footage. So anyway, um, second complaint that I have today is actually about this little Pat McGrath lip balm that I've been raving about on YouTube, Instagram, to people in my real, like, you know, my real life. This lip balm, literally, I just went to put some on and the freaking cap was off. And I'm like, how did that happen? This cap is not very secure. So that kind of knocks down a couple points for me as far as the price tag like the cap should be either magnetic or have a really strong uh, clasp so I'm a little bitter about that anywho today I figured on my break I would talk to you guys about things that I will not spend money on you know I'm not a minimalist I don't think of myself as someone who's like a penny pincher. I buy things when I feel like they're calling my name or of interest to me, but I have to say that there are certain categories of products that I just refuse to spend a lot of money on, and those are the items I'm going to share with you guys today. Maybe if you are someone who spends a lot of money on these products, you know, maybe it could inspire you to maybe next year you know, look at your budget and try to look for these items at a cheaper price or, you know, whatever. If it inspires someone, cool. If not, that's cool too. But I've got quite a list. So let's get started. Okay. The first thing that I will not spend money on is coffee at home. I don't even own a coffee machine at my house. I know that that is like mind-blowing to some people like how could you not have a coffee machine at home I just don't make coffee at home if I am in the mood for a coffee which is to be honest pretty rare I will go to Starbucks or I will uh, you know as far as like my daily caffeine intake goes I know I'm I might hear it in the comments section from some of you guys but I drink energy drinks, Red Bull, NOS. I don't really like Monster or Rockstar. I'm pretty selective, but I like energy drinks. I've been drinking them for a while. Coffee is just not my favorite thing ever, to be super honest. And so, yeah, I have energy drinks. We always have a fridge full of energy drinks, but as far as having like a coffee maker and doing K-cups or ground coffee or whatever. It's just not my thing. If and when I do go to Starbucks, I buy things like lattes or, um, you know, during the holidays, I do really love Starbucks holiday menu. The gingerbread latte is my favorite. Last year, they didn't even bring that back. I was bitter. The cinnamon dolce latte is really good. So, most of the time, if I'm going to Starbucks, it's going to be around the holidays, but if and when I am in the mood for a coffee, it's going to be like a latte and I'll go out and get it. I don't buy any of that stuff for home. And my boyfriend doesn't drink coffee like ever. The second thing that I don't spend money on is fake nails or press on nails. I know that nails are a big deal to some people they go once a week or every 10 days or however often you go I don't even know how often a normal you know time span is to wait 
but I do not spend money on getting my nails done. If I want to have color on my nails, I will do it at home. I'm looking over here because there's a weird lady in a truck and I'm hoping she's not here to snatch me up. I'm just kidding. Um, so yeah, fake nails, not my thing. Now, once in a while, I will go and buy a bottle of nail polish if I'm like at Target or Ulta and come across a color that I don't own and I think that it's interesting enough, I will do that. But I'll just do my nails at home. You know, I would say not even once a year. I don't even want to say it's that often. I might go get a pedicure, but I can do all that stuff at home. So I'm not going to spend money and pay a nail tech to do it for me when I can just do it in the comfort of my own home and save money by doing it myself. Next, false eyelashes. I don't spend a lot of money on false lashes. I do have a few in my makeup collection, but if and when I need to buy false eyelashes, I will buy something from the drugstore Ardell Foamy Whis Wispies are great. Fake lashes. I know some people will spend $30, $35, $40 on a pair of false lashes. That's just not my thing. I would absolutely be mortified if I had to come up off $40 for a pair of false lashes. But you guys have seen my other Get Ready With Me videos. I don't incorporate false eyelashes into my looks very often. I there for a while had a little stint with it but that kind of went away super fast I would rather rely on really good mascara I know sometimes it can be a pain in the butt to take off at night but for me and my personal preferences that's just what I like more but all that to say if there is a situation where I need a pair of false lashes I'm gonna go straight to the drugstore. I'm not messing around with Lily Lashes, House of Lashes, like all of those higher end sort of Instagram famous eyelash brands. I just cannot allow myself to spend that much money on a pair of lashes. Next, this is gonna take a second to explain. So, buying makeup for YouTube, to review for YouTube. I will not, if there is a makeup product that comes out and I feel like, oh, well, I could go buy that and it would give me a lot of views on YouTube, I'm not doing it. If there is a makeup product that comes out that I am genuinely interested in, I will buy it and review it. But I know that there are a lot of channels, <clears throat> excuse me, that have built their audience because they are always the first in line to review any and all new makeup that comes out. Skincare too, but usually it falls under the makeup category. That's just not something that I am willing to put myself in debt just to hope that people see my video first and hope that they like me enough to stick around and continue to watch my content. I know that there are also a lot of people that allegedly will buy this makeup from Sephora, review it, get the views on YouTube, and then return it to Sephora. That I think is just scummy. I think it's gross. I don't agree with it at all. So instead, the way that I've chosen to run my channel is that if there is something that comes out that sparks my interest, or I think that you guys would like it, or it might be interesting to apply, or I have a genuine interest in it, it's got to be pretty good, I will buy it and review it. But I'm not just going to be out here buying, you know, the new L'Oreal collection, because I think that it could help me get views on YouTube and build my audience. I want to build my audience because people like my personality. I don't want it to be an infomercial for the newest launches at Sephora or whatever the case is. I want this to be, I engage with you guys, you engage with me, you decide to stick around because you like my personality, you like what I have to say. Not everything is going to be makeup based on my channel and that's just the decision that I made for myself. The next thing that I will not spend money on is cable TV. I haven't had actual cable TV in about three or four years. 
You know, honestly, I'm not someone who just sits around and watches TV a lot as far as sitting down and paying 100% attention to what's on the TV. I am someone who will turn on the TV when I'm home alone so that there's some noise in the background. 90% of the time, I'm not even paying any attention to what's on, even if it's my favorite true crime, true crime shows. The time that I'm paying attention to those is at night when I'm laying down. So that's a small fraction of my day. I like to have them on the, in the background, but if you ask me about specific details of the show, I wouldn't be able to recite it because I'm uh, listening to YouTube on my phone, I'm doing laundry, I'm in and out of the house with Axel, taking him on walks. So it's a very small part of my day where I'm actually utilizing something like cable TV. Therefore, I am not going to pay $80 to $100 a month to have cable TV when it doesn't really matter to, to me. Now, what we do have is we have streaming service through DirecTV that does give us some cable channels, but when you look at the cost difference between streaming DirecTV and having something like Cox, Fios, or actual DirecTV, it is a lot cheaper for some reason to do it through the streaming service. So I'm okay with doing that, but as far as having just, you know, like normal DirecTV with like 300 channels and you're paying over $100 a month, I just can't do that. This lady that's parked next to me next to me got a chili and it's like 90 degrees outside. <laughs> okay. The next thing I won't spend money on are physical books. One of my live streams the other day, you guys were asking what books I read. And I was completely honest and said, you know, I don't really read books. The last book I, the last book I actually listened to was The Open Book by Jessica Simpson. And I really loved it because she was the one that narrated the whole thing, which I thought was really cool. So as far as buying a hard copy of a book, it's just not something that I want to spend my money on. If there is a book that comes out and it's of interest to me, I will try to download it and listen to it. But to be really honest, I would rather, I'm, I'm a very visual person, so I would rather sit and watch a documentary than listen to a book that is three, five, seven hours long. You know what's so funny with thinking about the books thing? You see so many Audible sponsorships on YouTube, and sometimes I wonder, like, do these people really actually like Audible? Are they really listening to the books? Or are they just saying they really listen to book, books to sound so intelligent and articulate, and it just so happens to be a sponsorship? Like, I really wonder about that sometimes. The next thing I won't spend money on, and this is something that I used to buy, but I stopped about a year ago, are fabric softeners like Downy Gain. I used to buy those and, you know, pop them in the wash, and it was, it got to a point where it was just another thing for me to have to buy, and I'm sitting here and I'm like, I use dryer sheets, why am I spending 10 to $15 extra for a bottle of fabric softener when like I don't really care like the dryer sheets do what they need to the laundry detergent is actually cleaning the clothes and as far as the laundry smelling good with dryer sheets I never have a problem and secondly I'm always putting on perfume or some kind of fragrance anyway so it's not like I really want to walk around smelling like a fresh pile of laundry so I don't know, it, it just kind of dawned on me one day and I'm sitting here and I'm like, okay, that is an expense that I could get rid of and I really would not even notice it. And sure enough, I stopped buying it and I don't notice. Next is candle waxes. Now I'm not talking about traditional candles. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about when I say candle waxes. I used to burn these and honestly, they are junk. 100%, I have never had a candle wax that I've burned and it actually smells like a normal candle would. I have tried expensive ones. I've tried cheaper ones. I've tried burning two at once. I've tried burning one in a small room. It's just like, 
I'm, I'm convinced that candle waxes are junk. I would rather put my money towards buying an actual candle, one that is going to smell the whole room up and I don't have to worry about cleaning the wax out of the little thing. And it's just like you burn through the candle and you recycle the glass container and I'm done. So yeah, candle waxes are junk. I know that some people like them. I don't think that they work based off of my experience. Next, clothing for work. I will not spend a lot of money on clothing that I am only going to wear to work. Typically, when I buy new stuff, I try to make sure that I can wear it to work, but I can also wear it out and about. So luckily, my office does not have a super business kind of dress code. It is business casual, and since the whole Rona started, we've been casual. I wear jeans every day. So, um, but I am not the type. I know a lot of people take pride in buying, you know, really expensive tops and uh, really nice pants just to wear to work. That's not my thing. If I can't wear it in my normal life and at work, I'm not going to spend any money on it. The stuff that I do wear to work is nice and it's put together and it's clean and tidy, but a lot of it comes from Old Navy or Target. Like, I'm just not spending money on stuff that I'm wearing to work. And in that same vein are dresses and dress shoes slash high heels. This is just a category of clothing I've completely written off. I used to wear a ton of dresses, especially in the summer, but I just don't care for dresses anymore. I am much more comfortable in a pair of jeans and a tank top or a pair of you know, cut off jean shorts and a shirt. Like that's just my style now. I think that it's kind of evolved from where I was say 10 years ago. And I still own a few dresses, but as far as clothing that I buy actively right now, I will not buy dresses. I will not buy high heels because I also hate being taller than my boyfriend. And high heels aren't comfortable. Let's just be fucking honest. Like wearing high heels for any more than five minutes is like misery on earth for me. I wear flats if I have to go to work. And aside from that, I mean either flip flops or a pair of vans or something really casual. That's just my style now. So dresses, dress clothes, all of that kind of sector, I'm done. So here's another random kitchen object. I do not buy bottled water. I have a glass water bottle from Beaker. I will throw a little photo up. I'm sure you guys have seen these uh, water bottles all over Instagram. So we have a water filter in our fridge and I just fill up my glass water bottle. My boyfriend has a couple water bottles that he uses as well. But as far as buying a case of bottled water, I think that it's so you know, bad for the environment. And I'm not someone who walks around and stomps and is like yelling at people for what they're doing that's bad to the environment. But for me in my house, I have zero reason to buy cases of bottled water. We have a really good filter. We have the reusable bottles that we love and we're, we're good with that. And uh, recently I've been using my Starbucks cup instead of the glass glass bottle and this one, you know, it serves the same purpose. All you need is a container that you can take your water out of the house and you're good to go. Next thing I will not buy at all is really costume jewelry. There was a time back when I was in the phase of wearing dresses and, you know, being a little more fancy, I guess you could say fake fancy, please. Um, I would buy a lot of costume jewelry. I wanted to have a wide array of earrings, necklaces, chunky bracelets, all of that kind of stuff. And now I am very simple when it comes to my jewelry. All I need are some simple gold hoops. I don't have my chain on today, but you guys have seen it in other videos, I'm sure. I have a simple 18 karat gold chain that I wear. And then I usually have like, today I have a couple of these gold bracelets and my evil eye string bracelet. And then this is a uh, bracelet that I made. My boyfriend has one that's matching. So what I'm trying to say is instead of buying 
a bunch of costume jewelry, I would rather put that money into a savings account or just put it on the side and buy myself something that is really nice. It doesn't even have to be super expensive, but just something that is nicer than a $5 pair of earrings. That's just not where I really want to put my money. And on top of it, a lot of times the jewelry falls apart. It turns your neck or your, you know, wrist green or it causes an allergic reaction. I I also have a very, very bad problem when it comes to nickel and earrings. So I have to be careful anyway, even if it wasn't my personal preference when it comes to earrings. Next thing I won't buy is bullet lipsticks and liquid lipsticks. I've ranted about this a little bit on my channel before, but I'm completely over the standard lipstick and the liquid lipstick. I have never owned a true liquid lipstick because I knew from day one it was a nightmare for me. I don't need an opaque color that's going to just dry my lips out and look like a mess after a couple of hours. I am a tinted lip balm, lip gloss kind of girl. So any of the products that I'm recommending to you guys are going to have minimal coverage, neutral colors, a little shimmer. That's just what I like. So I'm not going to have a drawer full of standard lipsticks. In fact, I kind of wish that companies would scale back on creating these kind of products. I think we have enough normal lipsticks. I would love to see more tinted lip balms and glosses. Next, colorful clothing. I'm sure you guys can gather from watching my videos. I wear a lot of black, a lot of gray. Once in a while, you'll catch me in a white tee, and even fewer times than that, you might catch me in a bright color that I already own. But I will not spend money on colorful clothing because I just don't like it. I don't wear it. I don't get enough use out of it. If I am buying something, it is nine times out of 10 gonna be black. And that's just my style. That's what I like. That's what I enjoy. So a lot of my wardrobe is black or gray. And <clears throat> a lot of people might look at that and say, well, that's boring or whatever. But I love black. I think that it is clean. It's put together. It is very eloquent. And black goes with anything. It goes with any makeup look. So a lot of my stuff is black. And that's just the way I'm keeping it. Okay, it's starting to drizzle a little bit. Hopefully you guys can't really hear the rain, but I'm just about done. Next is shaving cream. I don't buy money or I don't buy shaving creams anymore. I rely on either a really emollient body wash, my hair conditioner if I really need a closed shave, or some sort of body oil. Those are products that I buy anyway, so I'm not going to go out of my way to buy a specific shaving cream when I have other, you know, emollient products that I can use in replace of that or in replacement of that. Okay, next, salon hair color. I will not pay to get my color done at a salon. I used to have bleach blonde hair. I remember when I was going every four to five weeks to get my roots done and I was spending a ton of money doing so. I've just come to the point where A, my hair is finally its natural color, B, it's very healthy, but C, I cannot come up off of two, three, five hundred dollars $500 to get my hair color done at a salon. I do spend a pretty penny on my hair cuts, but as far as color goes, there is no way that I would spend that on getting color done. It's just not something that I want to spend money on. Okay, second to last item are pajamas. I think that pajamas are so cute, but for me, I am, you know, if I'm in the evening around the house, I am wearing a pair of athletic shorts and a t-shirt. I do not need something that is specifically called a pajama set. I have so many old t-shirts I have so many pairs of shorts. I thought that guy was going to back into someone. Um, so I just have so many of these old pieces of clothing that are hanging around. That's what I wear to bed. That's what I wear around the house. I can clean the house in this stuff. I don't have to worry about dog hair or dirt getting on it. So for me, pajamas are just a total waste of money. 
And the last item are Lush bath bombs. Let me tell you guys, I used to be that girl that would go to Lush and buy five or six bath bombs and walk out with a $40, you know, receipt. I think that bath bombs can be very fun and enjoyable, but I do not need a Lush bath bomb to take a bath and enjoy myself. I can use stuff that I already own, like some body oils or a, you know, do a little salt scrub and feel really good about my bath. I'm just past the point of spending money on such a specific item for my bath. So anyway, yeah, those are kind of, you know, a rundown of things that I either, I either used to spend money on and don't anymore, or now if I have to buy them, I'll try to save money by buying something very cheap and affordable. So I thought this was going to be an interesting little video. If you guys have items that you will not spend money on or you used to spend money on and now you try to save if and when you buy these items, please put them in the comments section down below. I'm always interested to talk to you guys. So for now, if you like this video, please leave me a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.